Hey, I'm Pastor Fitz. Welcome to Gingensburg, and happy Father's Day. Father's Day can hold many emotions for both men and women. The joy of having really awesome kids, the grief of those who had a loving father that passed away, the frustration and curiosity of those who never knew their dad, the expectation of those waiting to become a dad soon, and countless other feelings and situations surrounding the father-child relationship. God can use this special day to draw us closer, closer to one another and to himself, the one true father who remains faithful and full of unconditional love. So dads, moms, grandparents, and kiddos, I'm glad you're here today. I pray that our time together brings just what you need this Father's Day. Let's worship together. Hey there, friends. It's great to be in another virtual worship with you guys. Today, I want to invite you to open up your hearts and minds to receive whatever it is that the Lord has for you. But as you're receiving, I also want you to give. Give God back the worship that he's due, the praise that he's due. So like the song says, if you're breathing, help us give him some praise. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father.
We're so grateful that through all of our failures and through all of our shortcomings, you always have been and always will be a good, good father. Oh, and I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love and dead of night and you tell that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am who I am Oh, and I seen many searching for answers far and wide but I we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what
grateful for your love, Jesus. Oh, yes. Amen. Hi, everyone. You can call me Pastor Fitz. I'm the director of Gingensburg Family Ministries. Whether it's your first time watching or you've been worshiping with Gingensburg for years, I'm glad you're with us today. You know, Father's Day is filled with all kinds of secrets. Like, did you know that French fries weren't actually first cooked in France? They were first cooked in Greece. Or that books about anti-gravity are so good they're impossible to put down. Well, I'm about to share a secret that's going to change everything you know about church communication. Come a little closer. Ginghamsburg has a brand new texting service. Everybody add this number to your phone, 937-358-6710. And list it in your contacts as Ginghamsburg Text or something cool like Ginga Text or Coolest Church Ever. We're going to use this number for all kinds of things. For example, if you're watching for the first time today, use this number and text NEW. That tells us, hey, cool, you, you want to take a step further. And that's good news because we have all the tools to help you live the Jesus life. Here's another example. It's really valuable for us to know that you're here. When you text CHECK-IN to the number below, it actually opens up opportunities for real friendship. You don't have to hide behind your profile picture. Check in so we can check up on you. So go ahead, do it now. See what happens. I'll leave the number here at the bottom of the screen so, so all of you have a chance to add it to your contacts. You got it? Okay, good. Someday soon we'll have new keywords like give and subscribe and Sasquatch. What happens when you text Sasquatch? I don't know, we haven't decided yet, but it will be awesome. Or maybe I do know. And maybe you should try it right now. See what happens. Until then, you can still fuel the mission by visiting gingensburg.org slash give. Thanks for your generosity. Your giving is shaping this church for the next generation, which obviously right now is still online. But we are opening for on-campus, in-person worship on July 12th. For all the details, sign up for the e-news. To do that, simply email sign me up to info at gingensburg.org. You can also get regular updates by following us on Facebook. If you simply can't wait for July 12th, we have one more outdoor worship gathering planned for June 28th. Get to the Fort McKinley campus by noon that Sunday and bring a lawn chair or blanket and some breakfast foods for the donation bin. Dads, you still with me? Hang in there, man. It's, it's been a tough few months, but you are crushing it. Pastor Rusty is up next with an encouraging word for all of us. With Father's Day on the horizon, thought it would be fun to just capture some moments with uh, my own dad. Uh, my dad lives in Pennsylvania, so we weren't able to get together physically, uh, so we met via Zoom. So, Dad, thanks for, uh, for hanging out with me today and having this conversation. It's great to be with you folks today. Uh, I'm Rusty's dad, Ron. What are some of your uh, favorite memories as a dad? I've got a brother who's a couple years older than me and a sister who's about five or six years younger than me. Um, so three of us that you that you have, you and mom raised. Um, but what are some of your favorite memories as a dad? I have a whole bunch of home videos. I once had a video camera uh, and Rusty, you loved to be in front of the camera. Yep. Uh, you played baseball and basketball, and uh, uh, going to those games and watching you uh, do your thing was memorable. It was wonderful. It was precious. I loved every minute of it. Uh, one, of, one of the things that I would like to encourage fathers with today is actually when we plan to do big things, they are big, 
But you know what? The things that really matter are the little things. The day-to-day living and giving and investing that molds character in other people. Yeah. It's good to remember. It, it, it isn't always all the stuff we say and do that has an impact. It's the way we love. Well, hello and happy Father's Day. I want to say thank you and give a big virtual high five to all the dads tuning in today. I'm a dad myself. I've got three kids. I know how difficult and challenging being a father can be. I know the sacrifices uh, that you make, dad. So I just want to say thank you. You are here. You are leaning in. You are learning. You are growing. I'm so glad you're here. I'm proud of you. I'm with you. I'm for you. Happy Father's Day. Over the last few weeks, we've been cracking open the book of Acts, uh, zooming in on what God was doing among those early Jesus followers right after his death and his resurrection. And uh, this summer at Ginghamsburg, we're asking God to do what God did then, to pour out God's spirit, uh, to, to lay it on and to move us into our neighborhoods and in our communities, to multiply, to help people live the Jesus life. So wherever you're at today, that's our prayer. This, this is a move series, would move you into your community community, into your neighborhood, and you would multiply the Jesus movement wherever you are. We've been gathering virtually. We've been encouraging you to find or start a life group. Uh, We've been serving in our neighborhoods, and we've even put together a church at home toolkit to help you and your family or you and your life group continue to live the Jesus life. So by the power of God today, let it all be so. Welcome to the movement. The entire book of Acts is actually a chronicling of God's movement through those early Jesus followers. And in Acts 8, we meet a man named Philip who demonstrates a crucial lesson for all of us, especially on Father's Day. So join me over in Acts chapter 8. We'll begin at verse 26. Let's read together. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stand near it. Now, I love how Philip was tuned in to God's spirit and was willing to go where the spirit led him. Earlier in the book, we read uh, that Philip had gone into Samaria and preached the good news there. He was also put in charge of ensuring that the Greek and the Hebrew women in this uh, budding, diverse, multi-ethnic community were taken care of with equality as it related to the daily distribution of food and resources. And later, we see him go into a town that was inhabited by longtime enemies of the Jewish people. And the subtext in each of these situations is that Philip is going to the places left out and overlooked, the places hated and demonized by his own community. And in today's story, Philip is at it again, reaching out to a quote-unquote outsider who simply was looking for hope. I think of Philip as that kid in high school who had the unique ability to relate with the cool kids and the not so cool kids, the rich kids and the poor kids, the the jocks and the intellectuals. He simply saw people as people and armed with a life-changing message of hope in Jesus. There is no place too dangerous and there's no person too far gone for him to go and to share that message. Keep reading with me in Acts uh, chapter eight, verse 30. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And this is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Now we have to stop 
and see just how remarkable this encounter is. First, Ethiopia is about a thousand miles from Jerusalem, and this man has made the journey there to worship and is now returning home. You want to talk about a long drive to church. I can only imagine that this was a once in a lifetime pilgrimage for this man from Ethiopia. What's more uh, is that by Jewish law, this Ethiopian man was ritually impure because he was a eunuch. As an official in the queen's royal court, he had likely been castrated at some point, a practice common during this time, and his physical situation by Jewish law kept him from fully participating in Jewish worship. He was a black man, a foreigner, a male servant in the court of a woman during an age of patriarchy. Everything about this man screamed outsider. And if Philip played by the rules, he would move on and leave this man as one of the left out and overlooked. How many times have you and I done the very thing? Have we moved on, turned the other way, taken a pass, and relegated someone as an outsider? But led by the Spirit of God, Philip does something even more remarkable. Seeing and hearing that the eunuch is reading from the book of Isaiah, he intervenes and says, do you understand what you're reading, friend? The eunuch replies, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? And what happens next is a game changer. Philip does the unthinkable. He climbs in. Don't miss this. Philip is sidled up next to a ritually unclean, socially unwelcome black man in a chariot headed towards Ethiopia. He doesn't simply run alongside. He doesn't turn away or take a pass. And he doesn't turn back. He climbs in. He listens to this man's questions and he holds the space with him. And he goes on the journey with this man. Friend, making a difference is as simple as as climbing into another person's life and riding along for a while. Because that simple act has the power to validate experiences, clarify confusion, impact futures, and even give vision for what God can do. Jimmy McGee is one of the people who climbed into my life, into my chariot, into my world. He's a black man who has spent most of his career pouring into young people, helping them live the Jesus life through groups like InterVarsity, the Atlanta University Center, and now as the CEO and president of the Impact Movement. His time in my life was brief, but it was oh so significant. I got to know Jimmy some years back when I was in Atlanta with my wife. Uh, The group that I was working with there was studying racism in America, and Jimmy was our mentor and our guide for that conversation. And During our conversations, Jimmy made a comment uh, that I've never forgotten. It is stuck with me. This is what he said. He said, Rusty, there isn't a a single day I don't wake up and think to myself, I'm a black man. See, his racial experience in America uh, forced on him and forces on him an acute self-awareness about his skin color and about his experience, where he can go and how he should go there or not. And and it's an acute self-awareness that I myself don't experience as a white man. Jimmy's stories and his challenging questions, his willingness to walk alongside this young white guy trying to learn about how to follow Jesus, helped clarify some of my confusion about my own racial identity and racism in America. He helped make plain to me what I couldn't see for myself. And as our country reels in the wake of police brutality, the death of George Floyd and the killing of other black men and women, I'm reminded today of Jimmy's testimony and how Christ's message calls me to engage in anti-racist efforts. And I wonder, has anyone ever done this for you? Has anyone ever climbed in your chariot, climbed in your life for a season, journeyed with you, helped clarify things, helped you understand your experience? Jimmy climbed in my life and it changed me. Philip climbed into the life of the Ethiopian man and it changed him too. By climbing in, Philip, Philip was able to clarify what Jesus had done and was doing. That he was making a way where there seemed like no way for eunuchs and for others overlooked and left out to be included in God's family. And the connection was so powerful. It was so impactful that the Ethiopian man embraced the Jesus life 
on the spot. In verse 38, we read that he was baptized right next to the road. He dove in. He said yes to the Jesus life right there because of the interaction that took place. I wonder what would happen if we became the kind of people who were willing to climb in the chariot of someone else and journey with them for a while to engage their questions, their concerns, and their needs. What would happen, dads, if we prioritized time to climb into the lives of our daughters and of our sons, even just a few moments a day, to understand their experience, the things that are coming up for them? We might even earn the opportunity to share things like this. God helps me know what to, do, to watch on TV. I read a few verses in my Bible every day to help me be a better dad. Sometimes when I struggle, I need to confess what I've done to God and to other people. And son or daughter, this is why we have a Black Lives Matter sign in our yard. And church, what would happen if we climbed inside our sisters and brothers' chariots, especially those sisters and brothers whose skin tone is a few shades darker than mine? What if we learned to listen well and restrain any knee-jerk reactions to someone else's experience and objection to their stories? What if we climbed in so that together, we, we might come to understand what a God with skin on, caring for the left out and overlooked, dying at the hands of a lynch mob, coming back to life and spirit empowering his disciples, kind of Christ, means for our lives today. If we commit to this, this is what my imagination sees. A generation of skeptical kids and young people soften their hearts towards God. That hard-hearted boss or, or co-worker begin to crack open their hard shell and find healing for the hurt and the pain that they've been carrying around for so long. My mind begins to see a decline in teen depression and suicide because their lives are full of caring adults and caring friends. And I begin to see a, a break in the cycle of systemic racism as hearts and minds and systems and structures are transformed. Maybe today you feel like the eunuch, left out, overlooked, uninvited, <laughs> turned away by the church or, or by other people in your life. And I hope, that, I hope that the message of today hits you, that you are included just like the eunuch, just like the left out and overlooked ones in Philip's day. Christ is inviting you to be part of the family. He's made a way for you. And all of us, have a question to answer today. Whose life will you climb into? If the Spirit of God said to you, go down to the road that leads to Gaza and run alongside the chariot, who would be in that chariot? Would it be the neighbor at the end of the street? Would it be that coworker or boss at work? Would it be the students at a local elementary school or English as a second language program? Would it be coming to the Listen and Learn on June 23rd where our very own Marcy Walker is going to share about raising black boys in America? Who is it in your life that just simply needs to know they're not alone? Who is it that needs a word of hope to get them unstuck and needs to see what God's love with skin on in the form of a human looks and feels like? I want to pray for us today that, that God will clarify who those people are in our lives and that God will give us the courage to do something about it. Let's pray. God, for those who are seeking understanding, who long to know and experience your love, that they're invited to your party and into your family, meet them in this moment. And for those who are considering their own ability to climb into the lives of others, God, make plain your voice in their hearts today. Lead them as clearly and powerfully as you did, Philip. So many need to know what faith looks like when it's in the body and soul of another human being. We trust for your empowerment today, God. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Rusty. Dads, check out our Gingensburg men's group on Facebook. And hey, there are lots of kids in our church who could use a positive influence or two. We could use a few new life group leaders. If that's something you're interested in, send me an email. I'd love to see you change a few lives when school starts later this year. Now would be a great time to set up a recurring gift at gingensburg.org give, to follow Gingensburg on Facebook, and to subscribe to the Gingensburg YouTube channel. 
Join us online next week as we continue our summer series on the book of Acts. God bless. Hey, Dan, talk a little bit about um, what's it like being a dad um, of kids that are all over the place. That's probably not the, our, our family was very close knit, so it probably wasn't your picture of what, what would happen to, to your kids and family. But what's that like and how do you see your role in our lives now? I reminded your mother often that our role was to prepare each of you for your journey. We had no idea what that meant, <laughs> but we did it because it's what you do. You know, God called you to Dayton, Ohio. Watching you serve the Lord there has been, oh, so precious to me. I'm so grateful. And you know, a couple times a year, Mom and I get to travel to Dayton and see you guys. Uh, yeah, it would be nice if you were close by, but uh, it's also wonderful to be part of this journey together. And I, I am so grateful. I'm just, I'm just grateful that God, in His amazing provision, has directed each of you into lives that are meaningful and uh, ones that we love to be part of. Yeah. Thank you, Rusty. Thanks so much. I, I love you and I'm grateful for you. Uh, happy Father's Day. And guess what? I love you too. And happy Father's Day to you.